Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video I'm going to give you 5 ways to make money in game dev. Let's begin. Number 1. Work at a game studio. This is the most straightforward option. You just get a normal job at an already established studio. If you're just starting out, this is probably the best and least risky option. You will be working with people who are much more experienced than you and learn a lot from them. So if you're interested in learning and becoming a better game dev, you will improve a lot faster when surrounded by experienced people than if you try to learn it all by yourself. If you get a job at a big AAA studio, you will be able to see a tiny bit of your work being sold in a boxed copy. This can be a great feeling and having some real tangible proof that you have reached your dream of becoming a game developer. The pros are hopefully you will find a job in a good studio which will give you stability in terms of hours and income so you don't constantly have to worry about how you will get income this month as long as you're working you will get paid. The cons however are you don't get to work on exactly what you want. Working at a large studio means working on someone else's idea. So if you're a huge fan of management games or point and clicks you won't really be working on those types of games in a large studio. So hopefully you get a lot of stability at the cost of not having control. Number 2. Freelance work. Being a freelancer in any industry is always an interesting and extremely challenging option. It can be really interesting since you work on a multitude of different projects, however it can also be extremely challenging to consistently find work and deal with all the bureaucracy of being self-employed. There might be months where you'll land a great contract and get paid a nice amount for some really interesting work, and some other months where you can't find anything and as a result you don't get paid at all. Being a freelancer is also very much dependent on your skill set. If you're an artist, there's a lot of places where you can put up your portfolio and try to contact, for example, some indie devs. But there are thousands upon thousands of artists looking for work, so it's very tough to get paid a nice amount. It is a job with a lot of supply compared to the demand. And if you're a programmer, Unity Connect always has a bunch of interesting jobs, and since code is code, you can do freelance programming in any area. If you know code, it doesn't have to be just limited to game dev, which increases the amount of offers you have available. Essentially, when it comes to being a freelancer, the main difficulty is finding work, so having a nice list of recurring contacts makes it that much easier. So in here, it is more risky and less stable than working at a game studio, but you do get to work on interesting projects and you have full control over what projects you take. Number 3. Make an indie game. This is the one everyone wants, but also the one with the most risk. It's great to be able to work on your own game ideas and create exactly the kind of game you want to create. You are completely free to create anything you want. You decide on what genre you want to make, what weapons to create, how the story goes, and so on. You have complete creative freedom. However, in choosing this path, it also means that everything is on you. If you work on a game for two years and it sells zero copies, you will get zero income for all of that work. So unless you have a ton of savings to burn through, this can end up in a disaster. While you can absolutely make any game you want, you also need to make sure there's a market for it in the end. This is a hyper-competitive business and one where 90% of games actually fail. There are tons of games coming out every month and you have to stand out from all of them to be able to have a chance. Just go browse the Steam new releases list and see how many games fail to get just even 10 reviews. But I don't want to completely discourage you. I want to encourage you to make your own games, but be aware of what it takes and what the chances are you will make a profit. This path can be extremely satisfying, but it does come with a very large risk. So if you're just starting out, I would suggest you grow your skills and try to make your own games on the side whilst having a stable job. This way you won't go homeless if the game fails, but you'll still gain experience. And the more experience you have, the better your games will be and you will eventually be able to make it and go full time. So if you do follow this path, keep that in mind. It is very risky and you might not make it, but also very fulfilling when you do make it. So figure out a way to minimize risk as much as possible and get to it. Number 4. Sell Assets There are several stores where you can sell assets directly to other developers. If you're an artist, you can sell your 3D models or textures. You can also sell sounds and various scripts for things like camera control, animations or shaders. For example, on the Unity Asset Store, you can browse it to look at everything being offered. And also while selling assets, you may come across people looking for freelance work. So if you're an artist and you make some great art, you might be contacted for someone looking for that specific style. Unity promotes their Asset Store heavily, so if you do manage to make something good enough and useful for a lot of people, you can find quite a lot of success. However, there are also a lot of websites offering free assets. 
So whatever you try to sell, you need to make sure it is actually worth the asking price. And similar to making an indie game, once you can create literally anything you want, you do have to make sure that there's a market for it, otherwise you won't get paid. Number 5. Teach Inside this option you have several different options. Each of these is obviously dependent on already having good knowledge of game development. You can really teach people if you're just starting out. First you need to gather your own knowledge and then you can try to teach people. So you could get a job as a professor in a school with a game dev course. Nowadays there are more and more schools offering courses related to game development. You could also create and sell complete premium courses. This is a relatively crowded market and something I personally would like to explore in the future. There are plenty of websites to help you sell courses and there's always a lot of people interested in learning game development. The games industry is constantly growing, so the more it grows, the more there is a need for game developers. So you can rest assured that there will always be people looking to learn. Or you can also do what I'm doing here, make free videos covering all aspects of game development. However, I'm currently not making any money on this channel, so I wouldn't consider this a valid alternative just by itself. Making videos, and especially on YouTube, is an extremely difficult path. Once again, there's a lot of supply relative to the demand. In order to make an income, you need hundreds of thousands of subs and views which are quite difficult to get. The only way I can afford to work on this channel is as a side job to my indie games. Hopefully one day, this channel will grow enough to start to pay for itself, but until then it remains a side job. So there you have it, 5 ways to make money whilst working in game development. They range from very stable to very risky. It's up to you to decide what you value most, creativity or stability. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.